G'day guys, Ben and Simon here. Welcome to another episode of the Pumped on Property Show. Um, today I'm again excited, bro. We're sort of talking about our journeys um, to financial freedom today, like where it, taking it back to where it all, all began. Uh, journey is a perfect word as well, isn't it? Like it is a journey. There's this trials and tribulations, there's ups, there's downs, there's in different times and uh, it's, it's been an, an amazing experience up until this point in time. I definitely have a long way to go, yeah. um, but I am really optimistic and excited about the future as well. Without a doubt, like just to sort of put some context around it, guys, Simon and I have suddenly now fumbled our way from no properties and starting some scratch to buying 21 or so between us over the last 13 years. Um, and then on top of that, almost $400 million worth of property for clients. So this isn't just like Ben and Simon's experience, but this is taking ideas from so many incredible people as you'll hear throughout this, this potty. Um, yeah, so let's add them kicking off. Well, I guess a question from me to you, Joe Light. Yeah, I just dropped the mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that. Oh, I think you know. It's good that. Hey, I've been watching, watching too much Snoop Dogg last night. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you... You were like realistically a catalyst for, for me and Crystal to get into property investing. You started at a very young age. We were quite young and impressionable when you got started. So like how does a 24-year-old in 2011 like decide that property is going to be the right path for him or decide that he's going to start buying investment properties? Honestly, if I had to pick up a book about stocks, I'd be teaching you guys about stocks. Hold <laughs> on, like it. It was honestly a book, man. Like I um, was at uni. The thing about me and and you guys and yourself, everyone listening to this is we're, we're wayfinders. Like we're trying to figure a way to create a joyful life where we get to help people, where we get to spend time with the people we care about, where we get to train and travel and look after ourselves and others. And so if you were looking for a way, it will eventually, like you'll find something that sticks. And so... I, you know, like everyone else, I read Robert Kiyosaki's book first. I think I was 22 and I was at uni. I remember being, you know, just, staying, just meeting my wife, like so many good things started to happen at that same time. And I remember going to a friend's party. I hadn't even met half of them, half of their ex-boyfriends and shit were there. And I rock up, it's a pool party. I'm, everyone's smashing beers. I'm like not drinking and I'm sitting in the corner reading this book in the sun. I just couldn't put it down. You would have thought you were the coolest guy at that party, yeah. I didn't <laughs> I was thinking you were fucked. I didn't even know anyone else was there, eh? Large as in your own I was so in my own world and, you know, I have always been a bit like that. Lunch is such an effort. Let's go. Or you just don't care about the opinions of other people. Nah, so I was like, this is so much more exciting. I've partied my ass off, like, for being there, done that. And did it. For 10 years after, I love it too. I love it happening, but I just loved the idea of finding my way. And I read that book and then I went, he's a property dude. I'm now a property guy. This sounds easy. And then I went and read John McGrath. Yeah. John McGrath wrote the most incredible book before he blew up. And it changed my life because he was Kiyosaki saying, become an investor. And then John McGrath was like, here's how I did it. Yeah. In Australia as well, John McGrath was like very yeah. Australia, non-biased, decades of experience. Kiyosaki's this bigger than life person. Yeah. yeah. And John McGrath like would book a restaurant out on his own. And so he did have to speak to anyone. He's such an introvert. The funny thing is, you know, that Robert Kiyosaki book was the same thing for me because I'd never had, you know, I'd, I'd been to school and, and not one person had taught me about the difference between assets and liabilities and, and why you should put more value on acquiring assets versus liabilities. But the second book that I, that really got my rocks off was actually John Lindemann's one, which is similar to John McGrath's. So similar, just non-biased, historic approach to how Australian property markets are performed. And, you know, that just really I could see the forest for the trees. And 11% like, a year, he went on to say, a oh, yeah. hundred years is what Australian properties average. I remember we both read it about the same time and I was like, oh, it doesn't seem easy. Yeah. Just hold stuff long term, you'll end up for eight. Yeah. And then, and then going deeper and starting to get into Buffett, Richard Branson, um, I was really into Trump's books back in the day and his dot go. Yeah. And just going... Oh, like almost every billionaire in the world, no matter how much value that business is creating, 
ends up in property as a store of wealth. And I'm like, it just kept reinforcing itself. So that was the start. And then the this, this shitty thing was, was I was like at uni for another two years after I read the book. Yeah, like, but I was like, still mentally in there, still heard a bloke in car, was not knowing, just getting by it. Yeah, Centrelink plus like a part-time job in a restaurant or a pub or clean Which, bedrooms. I find that is a good thing, you know, because you, you weren't in a financial position to do anything. So instead of going, shit, I've just picked up this book. I need to buy a property. I'm going to go buy one. You had to continue learning, continue reading, <laughs> continue talking to mentors and stuff, which I could say like there was a method to that madness at that time, but... I really didn't continue learning about property. I read those two books. There was no, there was no YouTube nah, videos. There was no podcast. No, like, podcast didn't need to see it. But there was, I, I, I did go and read zero to 130 properties, 10 properties in 10 years. Like everything that was available, smashed the category in like a month and a half. Like I was so into it. And then I'm like, oh, I've exhausted it. Yeah. Went to dip the Boholtz course and every other course I could. Yeah. And then was like, oh, like, there's not a whole lot of like prescriptive, this is the way to do it stuff out there. Yeah. And like your first probably what, five, six years of investing is completely different to your mindset and your mentality these days as well. So what happened in those first few years and then what was the catalyst for the change? So for me in those first few years, I, I finished uni at 24. I actually... I finished a year before that and my wife wanted to finish her interior design course on the coast and I was like, I just want to go to Sydney and start making money and she's like, no, I need to finish this course. And so I got into IBM's graduate program and delayed it for a year and then I just worked like in a job on the Sunshine Coast with a sustainable solar company and then was contracting to the Sunny Coast Council and the state government in a little business that I had at the time around sustainability. I don't know how they gave me money. And I, I look at it down and I'm just like, whoa, that was, I think they just were like, this is a young dude who's really passionate. Let's just help him out. I remember coming to the, uh, the uh, award ceremony at the University of Sunshine Coast and I, I was so proud of my big brother and I was just so like excited and stoked to be there. Like you look at it as though, you know, it's a bit weird, but like as a, as a bystander, like you were doing cool shit. That's why you were getting paid for it. And like, yeah, you know, didn't you get Sunshine Coast? sustainability award for a year or something. I forgot how that. Yeah, I did. I think I got that stuff out. Yeah. And um, I was just all in. Like, I'm all in with what I'm doing. When I'm playing sport as a kid, I'm all in. When I'm partying, I was in. When I'm travelling, then I moved to, like, sustainability, business, property. So it's, like, my nature is, like, when I find something I love, like, if this is, like, what most people's depth level in the, the category goes to, like, mine is a thousand pounds. You're in the the Trench. Yeah, I'm just like, and then, and then the old way through to China. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I was looking for something to stick the same as you guys. I was looking for something that was so exciting to me that would create the life that I have now, then. And so I saved a bunch of money and then spent it in that first year. And then I saved a bunch of money again. Um, oh, we are the worst enemies sometimes. Yeah, I'm like a king in self-sabotage, like, you know, me too. Um, you know, I'm super healthy. We're humans. Yeah, and now I'm going to like blow it up for a couple of days or whatever. But who cares? Like, that's the end. Yeah. And exactly, you're going to have that. Um, but then this, you know, I bought the first property with a couple of mates in Sydney. It was a two-bedroom unit in an absolute, like, ghetto, drug den, worst block of units you could ever buy. And it's still doubled in value from the time I bought it till now, really, which... You know, but worst decision has been a great decision still, and that's why I want to like get this across to people today. Like wherever you are, whether you're starting or you've got a few, being in the game is a lot better than being doing something. This is better than doing nothing. Um, so I bought that, and then I remember like fourth. I remember literally like I was working at IBM all day because the job was so mindless in the first year of the grad program. I was you do it literally listening to just. I reckon I, I read 53 books in that year on the train. Yeah. And I also listened to eight, eight hours a day plus training one hour a day of content. So I was just like, it was just like a download of life info. You finish uni and then you do another university degree. I literally like went off that year, just read every single marketing business property book I could find. And then, because I was so bored in my job, 
Um, like, I remember the first day working in the American Express office in Piedmont or wherever it is. And um, the guy's like, I've already been like running a business thing on the side, making like twice my graduate income. And I get to the grad program and he's like, yeah, can you just spend this week um, filing my shit? And I'm like, yeah, like no problem. So podcasts are in, doing whatever thing. And then they go up the pub. And this was the big thing for me. Like I thought getting into IBM was like going to like the Super Bowl. Like I'm finally going to be with people that think the way that I think. And then first day they like come up to the pub and I thought it was like a celebration to like, hey, you, you guys. I'm like, I went back to the office after an hour because I'm like, I don't know what, like, the what is happening. These right. guys were at the pub. They didn't even come back. And then the next day, they're like, we're going for lunch. And that was every day for the first month. And I'm like, these fucking dudes aren't even working. They don't give a shit. They're just clocking in for the job. I'm like, it felt like it was just above working at the state government or local council's office. But I don't mean to be judging on that. Like, I don't want to come across like a dick. I just... I just want to like spend time with people that deeply care, like you guys listening to this and us. Yeah. You know, I was looking for that. Like I was looking for purpose, not just to like clock in for 70 years and then like retire and live my dream life. So it sounds like it's just all like, even though it hasn't been like following a, a strict plan from the very beginning, like it almost sounds as though like you curated this life and you created this reality for yourself. You've designed, you know, your, your dream dream life in inverted cobbers. Like there's no dream life, right? There's always going to be challenges. But rather than just doing the norm and following the, the path that we've been told is the right one, you know, you just intuitively didn't feel aligned with that type of lifestyle. You're so, that's the word, intuitive. I was looking for an intuitive fit, not just a logical one. And I remember ringing my mentor on like six week at IBM and I'm going, this isn't for me. And he's like, whatever you do, you'll blow your life up if you leave this, this company at this, <laughs> time, this early. That's like the uh, Aaron Rodgers teacher story that he tells on, on um, one of the podcasts where he's like, this, so Aaron Rodgers is a, is a quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, or was. We'll see what happens there. And uh, when he was in high school he had, and, and college, he had teachers that were like, you're going to amount to nothing, you're not going to do anything. And like, little did they know for people with Aaron Rodgers' personality type or your personality type, it's like, they feel lighting the fire under there. Yeah, and that's a, just the Jordan thing. Like, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'll like prove it to you, 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 and you. And I like collected those things for a long time. And I had the scars that he gets cheap that fueled me until it doesn't. And at some point it won't. So just like that's an important part too. But you really quickly, before we start your journey, like I get this property, I'm now working for Ray Watts on the weekend. One of my friend's brothers was a baller. He was making like, he was one of the top performing Ray Watts in Australia. He was like, I'm gonna be retired at 40 and I'm like 24 working for this guy, driving around with him every Saturday for free taking names, opening his things, learning about property, real estate. And he owned a whole bunch of shit outright. He'd also done development, principal places of residence. Where's he not a fro? It's T's brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon. Yeah. And uh, Hellsberg. Yeah, so I was waiting down in Sydney still. Yeah, and so I was doing that on Saturday mornings and Thursday nights and working with his top performing team. Just my, I was just asking questions. I had a goal at that time from the time I was like 20 to 26 to catch up with three people per week that yep. were successful. And I had four questions for them. I'd take them out for lunch or a, a coffee or whatever I can be and just pick their brain. And like, I just had like, I still have it somewhere. I think it's on an old computer, like more than a thousand pages of like, what are those? So then dad said to me that he'd lend me 10K for my first property, but I bought my first property without it. So I hit him up and I'm like, dad, you said you'd give me 10K. He's like, you've already bought your first property. And I'm like, well, you said it. And so he gave me 10K and I went and bought the second property. Because at that time in 2011, they were asking for like 5% deposit to yeah. the TFC. Yeah. It's crazy. It's good to know what could potentially come like with those loose lending. Because it feels a lot more difficult right now. Because most people are getting service at 8 to 9% to, for a loan right now um, as an interest rate. So about to get real easy next year. Yeah, well, we'll see, hopefully. Um, but it, it, does, it does change, and it's good to recognise that on your journey to financial freedom as well is, like, things are going to change. You can't just take the reality as gospel and, and as, as, as face value because things change. Like, 
the world is fluid and it's constantly in flux and like these are businesses like you know real estate agencies property investors banks like their businesses they want money coming in they want a profit and they want to show their shareholders that they're doing the right thing so oh yeah they have new that so you need to tell your head it yeah so like that was my first two properties and sort of the run up to it like reversing the same questions for you like where did it start to get to like that starting point for you? Yeah, so, you know, for me, like I had an interesting, you know, late teens, early 20s, like I just didn't necessarily have that, like I, I just hadn't figured it out yet. I was still figuring life out. Um, oh, me too, but one thing I did not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, what is one thing that I've always been is like extremely observant. So when I'm listening to you and your mates talk about this stuff in the spa and around the pool table at mum and dad's old place, um, you know, when I'm watching what you guys are doing and when I'm listening to other people as well, like in the area that we grew up in, very blue collar, mostly people working in trades, uh, not many people are very, you know, financially well off certainly no one was financially free that we knew only no one investor except simon until i was 24 yeah not a single person that had a single investment nah so everyone sort of you know the go to school get a trade or, or go to university get a good job buy a house put money in surf up and um you know hopefully it'll work out you know everyone living for the weekend you know smashing beers on the street every single night it's just like i i've witnessed that they're like cool you know that's that's your life. But when I started seeing you guys do your things, I'm like, oh, there is a different way. And same thing for you was the same for me. It's Robert Kiyosaki. That was the, the petty drop moment. That was when I go, oh, there's a completely different way of operating in this world. And reading that book, I sort of was observant of the fact that there is this system that, that we exist within. And like the education system sort of promotes us to work for a big company for our whole entire lives to pay money to the government in tax and put money away in super. Um, but then Robert Kiyosaki is telling me about this completely different, counterintuitive, counter the norm way of, of operating that appeared from his experiences to be a hell of a lot more beneficial. So at that point, I'm like, oh, this is what I want to do. So I actually thought, I'm like, well, what can I study to put myself in the best position to get a good job? Uh, to earn good money so I can start investing. So I, I decided to go back to TAFE as a, ma as a mature age student and, and do a, um, a, I think it was a, a diploma of um, business management. This is when I was in my early 20s. Oh, so you, so you did the TT? I did PT straight out of school. Yep. Uh, then I started working in retail. Then I started working at surf camp. Right. And then I went back to TAFE because I was like, I don't want to commit to a four-year university degree. So I went to TAFE, got the uh, Diploma of Business Management, and that took me six months. And then that actually took six months off my university degree, and it cost me way less than the course it would have at uni as well. So I was like, super, but like, living in the loopholes has always been my vibe. <laughs> so I've gone to university then and got a Bachelor of Commerce, man majoring in management and marketing, because I always felt like, you know, managing people and, you know, creating like bringing in new business to, to um, companies is a very valuable thing and I can't see that changing in the future. So I went down that path and saying to you, like my whole goal in life, remember, was to get into corporate Sydney. Yeah, and like I, I, was, I was hell bent on getting into corporate Sydney. And I <laughs> went into the city one day for an interview during the summer to do like a little bit of a summer grad program or a summer internship and I go in there and it's early in the morning and everybody's like rocking their suit and ties, everybody's drinking their coffees on the train. I get in there and everyone's just sitting in their cubicles, like just glued to their computers. Nobody's talking to each other. It was a very negative environment, yeah. similar to the pumps on property office. <laughs> <laughs> Completely the opposite, eh? But it was so eye-opening to just be like, oh, like, this isn't what it's all cracked up to be. And then from that moment, I'm like, I need to do something different with my life. I need to, you know, I, I don't know what I want to do. And at the time, you know, I was with this American girl and her father was like one of the top dog commodities traders over in the United States, you know, Forbes 500 list, like 
big dog flying on private jets around the country and stuff like that. Um, you know, his network was insane. And he's telling me about his staff that are earning like $100,000 a month as, as traders. And I'm like, all right, investing is mad. The best thing is being like, these guys are really doing so, some substantial stuff. And um, then we actually went on that America trip and, and I hadn't even really thought about this. And, and you just go, hey man, like your life's kind of changing at the moment. Like, do you want to move up to the Sunshine Coast and, and work as a, as a property investor with me? And I'm like, I just jumped at the opportunity. I needed change and, and I moved up. And that was really the beginning for me. It was like, okay, well, I learned a unique skill set in marketing and management at university. I understood that I didn't want to work in, in cor the corporate world. Uh, I understood that I wanted to become an investor. I just wasn't exactly sure which path I went down. And then when I started working full time in the industry and I started learning about everything that there is to know about property investing here in Australia, it filled my cup and it made me, it filled my heart. It made me feel really excited. And, and I just trusted that intuition. I trusted that gut feeling and I just went head first into it. And uh, yeah, like that's where it all really began for me. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a cool journey. Uh, but then like, obviously that was about seven years ago almost now. Like it was a long time ago um, that, that that sort of transition all occurred. And that was sort of when your strategy started to change as well, where you went through like a bit of a re redevelopment, would you call it, of your property portfolio? Or? Yeah, so like let's just fast forward from like IBM at 24 to like the early 30s. Yeah. By this point, like I think I'd bought eight or nine properties and like I still had no idea what I was really doing. Like I had a lot of the technical skills. I had the network. I knew markets. Like yeah. I knew how. I, I've always known how to find value and buy well. Yeah, and negotiate well. Well, this because I think you're you're like what you haven't told the audience is how analytical you are and you know how data oriented you are. So I think that would have been the the catalyst for you figuring out the market identification, the suburb identification, the property identification because you're like well what is the method to the madness and your analytical mind figured that out? Yeah, so by this point, um, I've got two young kids and I'm trading at that point like 100 hours a week at least. Like I remember doing strategy sessions with people in the early days from 7 or 8 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night, two days in a row, then filming, buying, running the team and a second business at the same time and I was cooked like I remember going on this trip to Morton Island and just like it was the first holiday I'd had for a while and I just like Lisa's like you're so tired we're over there with some friends with their kids and I was like sleeping and I remember just waking up from this dream that I was having and just bawling like I was just like fuck something so off and then I went to a friend's barbecue on their farm a few weeks later and I'm like, I don't know what to do here. And she's like, well, when I was running my business, I, I, I stopped working five days a week. I went to four. I'm like, man, if I could just stop working seven, that would be sick. And um, but get down to a normal working week. That yeah. Do it. And so I took, I just like, it took me two months to get the confidence to do that. But I'm like, I'm at like breaking point. I've got to figure something out. And then I went to four days a week and that changed everything because I had enough time to recover and to like figure out the way I'm outside of this. There was so much ego for me, chips on my shoulder, identity attached to like, I'm going to be fucking financially free. I'm going to get it before I'm 30. Like I'm going to do whatever it takes. And my, mine, like a lot of you guys, like underlying thing is like, I'll push past any pain to get what I want in my, my like self that I've created, like the, the mask that I've put on, like the version of myself that I created to get from nothing to like now, we, you got to do some shit. We had man, 17 properties in 12 years. It's like a lot of activity. Earning 45 grand, then 50 grand, then 80 grand. Like I bought six properties earning 80,000 bucks a year. Yeah, wow. So like there's a whole lot of cost that comes. But I'm now looking for like I've opened all the doors that everyone said I should. At that point, I was living on a waterfront home. Like I was like, I hate kids. I had the uni degree. I'd had all the jobs. I'd got the businesses. 
all the properties and I'm like, first thing, these properties fucking suck because I'm going to be financially free at 18 at this rate. I was starting to see that I was buying the wrong stuff. Secondly, I was like, these aren't performing as well as other properties around them are. Why? And third, I was like, I kept forecasting because I was in such a fear state and a responsive state all the time that the world was always going to crash. Yeah. This was at the point where I was still reading everything in property. I had like 19 or 20 different emails a week coming through. I was like training at the gym, listening to property studio, all the economists. And I'm like, I was collecting everyone's opinion still because I hadn't found a, a truth that like worked for me. And then I remember my wife went away one weekend and I had the kids and I was, it was about three o'clock in the morning. I'd been reading Ray Dalio's stuff. And I was so far down the wormhole and then I stumbled across Phil Anderson. And this guy's like wrote a book on 250 years worth of research for the secret life of real estate and banking off the back of another book that was 350 years worth of research off the back of a book that had 600 years worth of research in France. And I'm like, what do you see? So I ordered it on the spot and I read as much as I could about it. And then over about another 18 to 24 months, I just went as deep as I could, became friends with Phil, yeah. caught up with him in person, a yeah. whole bunch, but this shit out of him on email, did a whole bunch of videos with him, some that went online, some that never did. And I'm like, I think I found like what I was looking for, which is like, there is a method to the absolute madness of yeah. the best thing that doesn't always work out, but it's close. Yeah. And then from there, I went, oops, I bought all the wrong stuff at the wrong time in the wrong markets with the right, the wrong potential. All good stuff to the average investor, but not to get to financial freedom quicker. Or to beat the average as well. So I've sold all nine of those nine first properties I bought. Yeah. How they're gone. Yeah. Um, and what I, or what I redid is build a portfolio based on best practice. So around about the same time, you were coming into the business. Yeah. We found the homely stuff, we got a John Lindemann stuff, yep. we found Phil's stuff and we went, we literally spent three years yep. going, what, and we talked to 3,000 people over that time, what does like best, that's best look like? And we created a model and a process of like, this is how you do investing. And that is, we talk about, about that much of bit stuff online, but how we buy yeah. is like, I'm like 20,000 hours into investing now. I'm like, you're way more than 10,000 hours in. Our team would have more than 100,000 hours in it. Yeah. It's like just obsessed. Density maths. Yeah. Obsessing over it. And then that information change immediately. Better. We like run it like, I need to test the flight. We run it like an IT company. And I yep. because of the IBM background, constant change. Yeah. Better information change. And with all of this, like, basically for me, we treated me like a client. So I was basically at this whole thing. I was at, yeah, I'm bang crystal. And we were just like, okay, well, we, we understand this information down. We understand the fundamentals. We understand the cycle and how it operates here in Australia. Uh, so for me, it was just like, okay, well, at the time, where do we want to get to? And, you know, that was sort of just after we developed the two properties to financial freedom strategy with Ryan from On Property. And that was such a good, you know, once again, another petty drop moment, just a, a moment of clarity. You're like, I need to buy a eight before. Yeah. So I just went out. I'm like, well, I can't afford to buy a dual income property right now, but I can afford to buy the land that has the capacity for that dual income home in the future. With the house, it's so good to breach the finance out. Exactly. So it saves my ass off for the first 18 months earning, you know, $50,000 per year. Got my first property un under my belt. And, and at the time, I was like, I'm going to do this two properties to find into freedom strategy. 12 months went by. I found myself in a situation where I'd saved up another deposit and, and the market conditions enabled me to, to get my second investment property. And once I did that, I was just like, the buy phase is done. And I just felt like I had learned so much over that three years from when I first started working full time at Pumped On Property to, you know, settling on that second investment property was a three year period. And I felt as though I'd, I'd learned a lot and, and I, I wanted to then challenge myself and push it a little bit further. At the time I'd now met Tay, we're talking about long term, you know, goals, uh, living in our dream home, up here on the Sunshine Coast, raising a family, being able to 
take those kids off holidays, send them to good schools, provide for them and give them the best life. And I realised that, you know, my goal of, of two properties to financial freedom to replace about $100,000 worth of gross passive income just wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to be. So we were actually meant to go travelling. Um, we saved up some coin after buying those two properties. I was a little bit fatigued just going, you know, I'm, I'm 24. Five years of age at this point in time, 26, and I've got two properties. Uh, I've You've gone hard from uni straight to boost business and just like a seven, six years of just like intense work. Exactly. And, and so I wanted that break. And so we're planning like a six month trip through South and Central America. Luckily, we hadn't booked anything because then in, in March of, of 2020, bro, COVID hits and right. changed that whole plan. And we're like, knowing the cycle, you know, talking to Phil Anderson. I'd been fortunate enough to meet him in person at that time. We talked in, in depth about the cycle and he's like, this is the mid-cycle slow down. If you want to buy a property, do whatever you can to buy a property is what he basically told me. So it is such a rather than spending, you know, thirty to fifty thousand dollars on a holiday, we we, you know, put all of our savings together and we went and bought out our own home in May of twenty twenty up here on the Sunshine Coast, which was basically an investment that we lived in. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that COVID continued. Um, you know, the business was doing quite well at the time and I just was working really hard and, you know, learning more and working with great people and, you know, found myself in a situation where we had another deposit available. So we actually went for that third investment property that had the dual income potential because I wanted after that change was my own home plus three dual income investment properties owned outright long term. Now I knew it was going to take me 10, 15, 20 years to take the portfolio from where it is right now to, to where I want it to be, where they're providing really strong positive cash flow, passive income, low maintenance, good tax benefits, all of those different things. But you know, I, I now have the foundations and now that a couple of years have gone by since accumulating that portfolio, I now have the freedom of choice and I feel like I'm at financial peace because I know my worst case scenario is, is like just more than what I could have ever dreamed of when I was a young kid. <laughs> and, and that just makes me feel so proud and, and happy with the decisions that I've made, made the, the advice that I was willing to listen to and take from you and Phil and Ryan and everybody in, in my life and, and uh, you know, like I hope one day the rest of that's had his history. <laughs> but that's sort of how it's unfolded and it's like there was a lot of change there. Like the, the strategy went from 100K passive income long term to 150K passive income long term. And um, I think as time goes by, that, that could change again. But, but I'm okay with that as well um, because... Change is the only constant is what I've realised from doing this stuff for, for quite a number of years now. 100% for it. Like it's, it's really inspiring to sort of see what you've done in the period of time that you've done it. Um, like there's, there's a lot of different types of personalities. We all have them. And my personality type is like I've sort of I've built up a belief system which doesn't serve me anymore and is dead. But it's like I've got to learn it myself where like what I've really admired about your personality is you can collect a whole bunch of ideas, find the best one, and then if that is truly the best one after you've done your own analysis, you'll just do it. Yeah, and it's like, it's incredibly impressive. A lot of our clients are the same way. Yeah, no doubt. And that's why like everyone has made so much cash in the last five years from stuff that we've bought. And so like, I suppose like where my strategy sits now yeah. is... You know, shaking off the past, letting go of like everything that's got me here to this point doesn't exist in my mind anymore. It's just great learning. I'm so grateful for it. I don't think about it or really talk about it anymore outside of moments like this. We both see ourselves as, as beginners and, and learners. Every day is a new start. Yeah, start. Yeah, the opportunity to like just become the full version of ourselves really. Try not to like... What do you say? Try not to buy your own special sauce. Yeah, and I did for a lot, which is why I just sold two of my properties, actually. But what I've now come to is, like, I would like 150 to 200 grand a year of income in the future. I've got a lot of debt right now that I'm slowly chipping away at. 
Um, interest rates going up from 2% to 6% sucks. Like it's costing me like 100, 150 grand a year more, but that's okay. Like I knew that was coming as well. Like it's very good speed at years. And um, my approach now or my stage of investing is I've got this like business of like passive income, like cash flow properties here. I'm working on paying that off. And then I've got some other properties here which are absolute quality properties with potential that I'll just hold until I feel like selling them, pay a shitload of tax on them to wipe off some more of this debt. And where I'm at at the moment is I'll keep bouncing between. If I want to add more passive income to my portfolio, I know how to do that. Um, but I'll start timing the cycle more after this next GFC comes through. I'll be like Sydney, Melbourne for the first seven to eight years and then I'll be in Brisbane for the seven to eight years after that and I'll become more of a transactional investor. And the thing that's happened for, for us is we've always started with the long-term investments, the foundations that once owned outright will give us our base level of financial independence, which, you know, as I've just said, about 150 to 200K for us personally. You know, that's significantly higher than the majority of people that we work with. Most people are looking for 80 to 120K passive income. Uh, you know, we just want to push the envelope a little bit further. You've got three young kids and, you know, I'm hoping to have a, a big family in the future as well. But we start with those foundations and then once you've got that, and, and I haven't completed my foundation yet, and I still need to knock down, rebuild, add drain flats, renovate properties. So I've still got to get there, but you've been able to, to do that. You've got your brand new dual income, long-term homes. And then that's what sort of enabled you to think a little bit more creatively, focus on a passion project that may or may not make you the money that you want, but it's like something that you can be a little bit more curious with and something that you can try it and at because you've got what you need yep. as, a, as a base as a foundation and then you can sort of take it to the next level and I think that's what's going to happen in my journey as well like my goal over the next four years is just to get my foundations completely set up so I've I just can set and forget those properties they're done I don't have to think about them but then I'll move into a different stage where I will also trade the cycle and I, I might look at more short-term assets um, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet because I'm not there yet uh, but that's sort of where you're getting at now where you've got more, I guess, options because of the knowledge that you have, the, the foundations, the, the, uh, the properties that you have as a base, you can then take it to another level. You know, my, my experience, because what I've realised with my personality is I, you know, the same as that Japanese word that you've got on the, the board at the moment at work, like, a kai guy, a icky guy, is it like consistent improvement? Oh, that's a fire thing. Because then, so like my new mono, Fire Set 2023, just consistently like starting from scratch every day and like moving things in a positive direction forward, really. Yeah. And so I've done, because of my appetite for learning as an investor, I've done buy and holds, I've done short term sales, I've done renovations, I've done a whole bunch of builds, knockdown rebuilds, subdivisions, Airbnbs. Like outside of really townhouses, I've done everything you can do as a as an individual investor in Australia. Uh, for Sydney, Central Coast, Sunny Coast, Brisbane, you know, and I'm like regional New South Wales, regional New South Wales as well. Um, and I've I've had the mistakes, like I've had people burn down my shit trash my stuff I haven't managed people properly I've had the worst advisors I've got the worst advice and so I've realized now that I don't want to waste my energy on things that don't work as an investor I had an appetite for learning um, that I applied to investing in property by trying to learn every different thing and if I had just bought two great houses in Sydney and kept them I'd be in the same financial position as like 10 properties right now. So my thoughts on moving forward, once you establish your base and your base is either a small number of properties that you hold forever that will make you wealthy or a small number of properties that will give you your passive income goal, it's really that simple. Yeah. Now what I'll do with my knowledge of the cycle is now that I know that City and Melbourne pretty much doubling value in a seven to eight year period after a GFC is I'll just literally buy a million dollar home and sell it for two million bucks. Yeah, maybe do a little red. I could have to pay a fortune in tax, and then I'll go to Brisbane, and then I will 
knowing that Brisbane in the second half of the cycle for the last 10 cycles has doubled in value. Basically, since 1890, it's done that. So I would go and I'll buy in Brisbane, I'll buy one million dollar place, sell it for two mil, pay a shitload of tax. Yeah. But how, how simple can this become, really? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you can double your money every seven to 10 years with leverage in real estate, like, I don't know what more as an investor anyone should be looking for. 200% return over a 20 year period with leverage. It's like, so for me, it's like, okay, it doesn't work out in seven years. COVID comes around and rattles things for three and a half years. Yeah, sweet. You hold it for 10, who cares? Exactly. Like, so, you know, for me, it's becoming much simpler. Property is now just fun. I'm using what I've learned to help a small number of people each year with Simon to smash it themselves and really like learn from our experience and get the right stuff. And I've just gone back to like a more true version of myself. Like property is really just your vehicle to go from where you are to where you want to be. Absolutely. In the safest, smartest, shortest period of time. But life is what you're here for, to help other people, to spend time with you, care, people you care about, to find what brings you joy and to make decisions towards that every single day. And that's where I'm spending my time now. I'm a lot it, man. It's so cool. And it's just such a different approach to investing and financial freedom and, and life. You know, a lot of it is the, the get rich quick, the short term deals and, and all of that. But for us, it's like the goal is financial freedom. The goal is choices. The goal is getting time back to do what we want, when we want, with who we want. The vehicle's property, and that's just the vehicle that we've aligned with most. You know, it's tangible, bricks and mortar. You can see, feel, and touch it. It's leverage, you know, it's leverage. And then from learning about the 18.6-year real estate cycle, the fact that all economic gains in society end up filtering through to the land values, it's just tick, tick, tick. And then what I found with investing, it's more about what not to do than what to do. And once you develop your belief system and strategy, it's just about taking educated action and reducing your risk. And, you know, the difference between where you want to be and where you are is time. It's so funny you say that because if I look at like the way that I educate our staff and our clients on how to do this properly as a process, our don't do this is like literally two or three pages long in our manual. And our to do list of what works is like seven tail things. Yeah. And it's like, it is so simple, 99.9% of our time at helping people buy it is looking through 100 properties a day and saying no to 99 of them so that we can find three out of 300 a week that makes sense. Yeah. And then when we do the due diligence, two out of three a week will make sense. Yeah. Like out of thousands and thousands of properties a year that we review, 100 to 150 makes sense for me. Yeah. It's like, it's as very distraction. And when you become that specific, property is so easy. It's a lot of it. I could look through 50 listings in 15 minutes and just go, this is the one. Because there's a method to madness that we've documented and turned into process to make my life as a buyer easier because I don't want to fuck up anymore. No. I spent so much time, energy and money on learning through experience that I'm like, I will never make those mistakes again like even the app that we created that produces the report for every property we buy you know people end up with like what a 12 to 15 page document that just stops me walking through a property with a notebook and thinking that i've like looked at the property properly yeah and then you overlay like a solicitor town planner building and pest inspector property manager insurance broker to look at it and then if you need a builder or like an engineer, like you're, you're covering the basis of mistakes that most of us make. And mm. a lot of like, a lot of where I'm at now is like making sure that people don't stuff up the same mm -hmm. stuff. That's what all of this content's about. Like hopefully people are learning from it and not falling through those same holes. Yeah, with um, just taking people through it in real time as to what we're experiencing in the market, what we're reading, what we're learning about. Um, because we have been very fortunate and it has worked for us so far. And, and, you know, we both have that abundant mindset where we truly believe that there is enough for everybody to have what they want. It's just about doing the work, figuring out the strategy, taking action and slowly but surely working towards, you know, creating a better future, a better financial future for yourself. And once you've got that financial part ticked and, and covered, then it gives you a lot more of a, you get a lot more creative potential to think about what you truly want to be 
doing with your life. If you don't have to get up and go to work to make sure you can send the kids to the right school so you can pay the mortgage so you can put good food on the table, make sure that their health care is taken care of. Like if that, all of those costs were fixed and, and taken care of from a, a passive income, what would you do? And, and the answer to that question for most of our questions is I'll give back. Yeah. And what a beautiful world that that could be when you've got many people that are financially free, that are, are living their true purpose, that are supporting less fortunate people or people that are just at a different stage of their life to also figure it out. And that's what we want to promote with all of our clients. Like it's not just about buying properties and creating strategies to achieve financial freedom. It's about challenging them and motivating them to go, well, you know, what would you do with your time if you were financially free? And, and uh, you know, the responses that we get from every single person that we get to work with is just, is so beautiful. Like everybody just wants to give back. Everybody just wants to help. help. And I feel as though that's the, Maslow's hierarchy of needs when you actually realise self-actualisation. 100%. Like, I work with an engineer this week, and, or in the last few weeks, sorry, and that dude's financially free. He can go work with a company like Charity Water and use those skills 30 hours a week to, like, create water in Africa for, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people for life if he wants to. Yeah. It's like, you know, what if you're an IT dude and instead of having to, like, work time for money for clients like what if you just serve it like yeah what if you just literally help um non-for-profits and stuff like that set up better it systems so that they can use less people to like run the thing and more people to contribute to their community like there's so many things that we can do with our skill sets once we don't need money from them that is way more joyful way more fun way more purposeful and that's what i want for everyone like that the underlying thing in the business is We talk about property and success and financial freedom and it's always been the way. Like when I listened to Dennis Waitley when I was like 22 to 25 every single day when I was running, he said, create a life and a story that other people can respect and then talk about what you really want. What I really want to talk about is a world where everybody is kind to each other, where everybody gives back to each other, where people are living their best lives and becoming the best versions of themselves. And the sooner you're financially free and take ownership of like that part of your life, the sooner you can fucking have everything that you ever dreamed of and go back to the person you were born to be versus all the layers and complexities of like who we have to become and the roles we have to play to pretend that we want to work for fucking 50 years doing shitty jobs, lonely people that we cannot stand but have to be around because they don't share the same value system as us. So it's like, Whatever's pulling you forward or pushing you away from your past, like embrace it, get a plan in place. Like you, did you buy those four properties in three and a half years? Yeah, years. I know I didn't pay you that much. I fucking know. Like I was like an internship at the start. I I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I can't remember giving you more than like 50 to 70 grand a year for the first three years at least, but you were bouncing between two businesses we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that was a job. Palmer, that was my first job. I had a crummy hand. Exactly. Um, and you still want to fucking pull it off somehow. Yeah, because I, I took the advice of, of everybody. I, I studied the markets and I did what I could where I could. Yeah, and I was the same. Like, and I, I, I also put my mortgage broker through a lot of stress and situations. <laughs> <laughs> he worked. Uh, he definitely worked for us. Thank you, Paul. But yeah, I'm like so grateful to have this chat with you, man. Like I want everyone to know that this journey looks like that. And in reality, it is that. Absolutely. The market looks like that, whether it's stocks, property, or crypto motions, motions, and the, the journey. It's like most of the time I felt like I was one step forward, three steps back. Yeah. Is this ever, I could not see the woods from the trees, but I trusted that like long term it would work out. And it, it slowly is. I'm still not financially free at all. I'm still like a long way from it. The amount of debt that I'm carrying, I think, does not feel good. But I believe that, like, I know enough about history now to know that the next few years could be shocking or great, but I know over 20 years it's going to be great. There's still that light at the end of the tunnel. Without a doubt there is. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And, like, I'm so grateful that we get the opportunity to help, you know, albeit a small number of people work through this process. And I'm so grateful that we have this platform where we can have these open conversations and talk about these types of things from 
from a different perspective. And I know like obviously it's the, the pumped old property show and the pumped old property channel, but you know, for us, we're pumped on life. Yeah. Like we're just why the best life for ourselves, for our family, for our clients, for every single person that, that we come in contact with. And, you know, for, to those few people that are, that are seriously considering purchasing an investor property and working towards creating a better financial future for yourselves and your family, then, you know, we would love to offer you a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with either Benny or, or myself, Simon. And, you know, you can go over to our website, pumpdogproperty.com, and follow the free strategy session links to lock that one in where we'll talk about where you're at right now and, and where you're working towards in the future, what financial freedom actually means to you. And we can talk about the current market conditions and, and where the opportunities lie right now and, you know, put in a, a clear action plan as to what you should be focusing on next. And you can take that and go smash it yourself or, or become one of these very few clients that we work with each month where we can hold your hand through the whole entire process and, and help you see the forest for the trees. But at the end of the day, you know, we just are very grateful uh, for everybody that listens to these podcasts from the beginning to the end. And thank you for the support for those people that share the podcast that give us the five-star reviews, that comment, and give us some advice. You know, we're just so appreciative and um, hopefully, you know, can continue bringing this content into the future. Woo, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Getting cool, bro. Yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.